Salmo nani? Molweni. Kuyamore. Abusheni. Fellow citizens. Thank you so much for coming here today. I want to thank you especially for having taken time in a moment in the life of our country and in the life of our city in Cape Town. I want to say this to you, it's absolutely no secret that Cape Town faces probably one of the most unprecedented droughts that the city faces. In fact, it is a scientific fact that what we are experiencing is the worst drought ever recorded. Now I want to allow maybe this image to sink in. Truth, this is the bottom of Tiervato's Kloof Dam. It represents the very nature and the extent of the crisis we face. It's not a human disaster, it's a natural disaster. And it's a disaster of immense proportions. Fellow South Africans, I think all of us need to take stock of what that means. What it equally does mean is that, in fact, we all now know that day zero is a real possibility. And I, I want to tell you, as a father, a husband, I have thought to myself, this is a very frightening reality. It fills one with anxiety. It makes you think to yourself, what do I now need to do? It makes you worry about what does it in fact look like? And what will it mean? And often human beings, when faced with that challenge, make one of two decisions. Either you flight, which is the idea of running away and saying, well, I'm going to exit, or you fight. And, and I think today more than ever, we face those stark choices, and I believe that the only choice that we're left with is to fight, is to put ourselves in the ring and say to ourselves, is it possible that we can defeat day zero? And what I'm going to outline to you today is just all the steps we want to put in place to give ourselves a fighting chance. And I'm here to call upon all of you, residents, citizens, people who come to Cape Town, this is that moment. And I want us to be clear that human beings have proven over and over again that when confronted with great challenge, they can triumph. And I think in, even in this time, we can triumph. But that's not going to be easy. We have to act clearly, we have to act decisively, and we have to act immediately. I want to put to you today the bare facts of what we have to deal with. Many people in the city of Cape Town, in the country, have expressed to me a lot of unhappiness. Unhappiness and concern and confusion as to how the dear run city of Cape Town has been responding to this situation. I want to assure you I've heard you. I understand how difficult it's been for you. I also understand that in the midst of all of that confusion, business people, civil society, have all been very worried. They felt a deep let of paralysis and an anxiety that comes with lack of information. It's brought us to a point where it's unprecedented times. And it's within that context that we meet here today. As leader of the DA, all DA governments 
report to me through the federal executive. It then becomes the sole job to say, what must we do? And I want to say, I have not been fully satisfied with how the city has responded to this particular drought crisis. In its communication in particular, has in some instances fallen short. And this lack of clarity is not what citizens should expect from DA governments. And so I have today wanted to come and communicate and ensure that you are clear we are taking decisive action in responding to this. I've taken what is an unusual, a step that we've never done, which is to take political control of our respective levels of government's responses to this situation. And I am grateful for every single individual that sits here. They are here today because they have been working hard, committed to the people of, the, of Cape Town and the Western Cape. I've requested that, in fact, Xanthia Lindbergh and Ian Nilsson be tasked with the incredible job of managing this crisis in the lead role in the city of directing the city of Cape Town's response to the drought crisis. And Ian will take the lead, supported by Xanthia Lindbergh, who is here with us. They will, as a team, form part of a drought crisis team. This, these are individuals that I know I can trust. And this team will lead and guide the best way for us to fight against this. This team will direct all efforts and whatever is humanly possible for us, in fact, to be able to defeat Day Zero. I want to say, Helen Zilla, who is here, will lead and ensure that the province leads and directs the disaster management response in the event that Day Zero does arrive. Ubong Inko Simatikzela and Anton Bradal will form a core part of directing and implementing the strategy of this particular team. <coughs> Let me say this. Our mission, the mission of the people of Cape Town, the mission of the DA is quite simple. Fellow citizens, we don't have a choice. We must defeat day zero. I'm, sometimes, you know, I'm the eternal optimist. But this is not just a question of empty optimism. It's a question of the fact that with the plan I will share in a moment, with all the efforts of the people, it's possible. It's possible and I want to assure you that we want to clear everything aside. Nothing can distract us at this moment, at this hour, and we will do whatever we can, as will each and every one of these members, to ensure that we defeat day zero. Fellow citizens, whatever it takes, whatever it will cost, whatever person needs to be involved, we will do what we can in a resolute, determined manner to ensure that all efforts all efforts are done in such a way to give us the best chance of doing so. Our governments will do whatever it takes. Now is not the time to be sitting here and playing politics and pointing fingers at that one or saying this. It's a time now that we rally together. We don't have time on our hands. We don't have the luxury of being able to do that. The only job that is before us and the only mission that is before us is to defeat day zero. It will take businesses, 
It will take communities. It will take all of us to do it. Let me in a moment share with you some of the plans that we, we put in place to ensure that we can achieve this. And from here, I want to make sure that I will promise you through this team consistent and regular communication. Because I, like I said earlier, it can't be right that people are left guessing as to what's happening. We will clearly outline what plans that we have and we'll give regular updates to citizens weekly to ensure that you know what we'll do <laughs> in defeating day zero. So, here's where we are. I'll talk to you about three things effectively. Where we at, what we're doing, and what we all need to do. The difficult news is that it's important for me to confirm to every single one of you that as things stand right now, based on levels of supply and consumption and the levels of water that we have, day zero will arrive on the 12th of April, 2018. Kunzi. Ngoguti Danons Mutven. What we do in determining what day zero looks like is dependent on a number of variables. The most crucial of these is the levels of water supply and consumption. And what I want you to understand today is how exactly Cape Town gets its water. And I will give you an update on each one. Firstly, we determine this on the basis of dams. Our dams are the primary source of water for Cape Town. The dam levels as to where they sit today are at 27.2%, with in fact 17.2% usable water left. So many people that I speak ask me, but why are more dams not being built? Let me make this, and it's a very important point for every single one of us to understand. The supply of bulk water, such as the building of dams, is not the competence of local government or provincial government. It is not the role of the city to be able to build dams. So let's be clear. The job of building city, of building dams, is in fact prescribed in our constitution as the job of national government. And it is the job of national government to deliver water to the cities. In the same way, the city purchases bulk water in much the same way as the city purchases bulk electricity. Cities don't run ESCOM, and therefore it would be wrong to assume that cities, in fact, also run dams. And therefore, the funding for any additional water supply falls within national government. Local governments simply don't have the kinds of funds or the skill to be able to, or the capacity, or the mandate for bulk water provision. The Western Cape as a whole needs the national government to play its legally mandated role to ensure greater water security. Fellow citizens, 
I want to assure you, particularly the people of the Western Cape and citizens of Cape Town, we will be taking the fight to national government to ensure that they fulfill their role of delivery water supply. It's an important fight. It's important because you can't say today you defend the Constitution, but when the Constitution mandates a particular sphere of government to do a job, that we fail at that. It's why we're, both the city and the province are considering legal action to compel national government to act. It's not a finger-pointing exercise. It's about saying the Constitution prescribes. And if you want to defend the Constitution, all of it must be defended. And in fact, it must be given to effect to, and the rights of citizens and ratepayers must be fought for and protected, fellow South Africans. I want to say this about infrastructure. Because in fact, whilst the city does not control while the city does is, in fact, it only builds infrastructure that cleans water and carries it to your home, to your business, to schools, to hospitals. That's what the city does. And a long time ago, the city put in place the strategy to reduce water losses. This is something I think the people of Cape Town ought to welcome and celebrate. Because whilst the rest of the country is averaging much higher in terms of how much water it loses, the city of Cape Town has fought to ensure that through its pipe and the management of, water losses are as low as 14%. It's been incredibly successful at delivering this strategy, which is well below the international average and also below the national average, which is at 37% for all municipalities in South Africa. When it comes to the question of augmentation, I'm often asked, and sometimes, you know, I thought about it my own self, how can a city that is surrounded by water run out of water? Right? How can a city surrounded by an ocean run out of water? I want to clarify this. Desalination, regardless of what anyone says, is very expensive and complex. And the problem simply is, the city simply does not have money to be able to do that. Large-scale facilities can cost up to 15 billion rands. 15 billion rands represents a third of Cape Town's annual budget. No city in South Africa can afford such a facility on its own. It would also not be right because ultimately it is not the mandate of the city to do so. It falls outside its legal mandate. However, this particular government and the city, as part of our immediate augmentation plan, we're bringing on board three smaller, smaller scale desalination plants, which I visited this week. These are located in Strandfontein, Monois BC, and the waterfront. Second to that is that our primary focus is about bringing Atlantis and Cape Flats aquifers online. This is, ladies and gentlemen, aquifers are the most immediate and cost-effective ways of being able to deliver water to citizens. They're far more effective in contrast to desalination. Therefore, water supply will also be augmented by transfers from private dams and water reuse. 
I'm here to tell you that in total, the city plans to bring 120 megaliters online by May 2018 as a result of all the augmentation efforts that we're bringing in place. I want to say this, that in fact the city will also look at even larger scale and aggressive augmentation projects to ensure water resilience in the years going forward, using a similar mix of water supply sources. We must ensure that the city of Cape Town never confronts this particular situation again. And the city will go beyond its mandate in pursuance of the most effective and sustainable or augmented water sources. Fellow South Africans, and this is the most crucial part, it comes to the question of demand management. This is the water you and I use. I need to be absolutely clear here. The only way we can avoid day zero in the immediate term is by further reducing demand. There's no silver bullet. There's no clever plan. There's no clever device. It's about us reducing demand. Those are the short-term facts and that's the reality we have to confront. I know it's hard. Any form of augmentation and that plan will assist in the medium and the long term. But in the short term, it's up to you and I. It's up to those of us who, for those of you who run businesses, those of you who are in communities, those of you in your houses, we have to reduce demand. This is not a function of a lack of planning or foresight. It is, as I've communicated earlier, an outcome of what is an unprecedented drought and a lowest, the lowest recorded rainfall in history. I want to remind you, Cape Town has come through droughts before. Because what it did is that it took steps to manage and reduce demand. So fellow citizens, the people of Cape Town, I now need your help. I need your immediate action. It is now that we have to do everything that we can. The only way we will defeat day zero is to use less water. This is for all of us. We have to do this. I want to say this, that we are part of this continent and part of this beautiful country. This is what Cape Town is. And Cape Town for me presents such hope. It's a beautiful city. Now we need all the residents to do what they can. I have been deeply concerned by the high users. And I want to say this, that the city has already voted to ensure that there's a punitive tariff for all the high users and be assured that this is not a time for us to softly, softly negotiate with you. We have to make sure that all users who ignore the fact that we must limit our usage of water, we have to go after them and we have to ensure that everybody complies with the restrictions that are in place. It's hard. A lot of our citizens in this country have spent a lot of time and they use buckets, they use limited water. This is maybe not about them, it's about the citizens who maybe have seen the limiting of water as an inconvenience. I know firsthand what this looks like. I know what it's like to now have to rethink 
old habits as to how long you must shower, how much water you must use for something. I get it. But we have to move beyond it being an inconvenience to being the fight of our lives. Because if we all do it right, if we all get it right, we can defeat day zero, but it's going to take everybody. I, the other day, got home, looked at my own son. I started to say to him, look, we all have to take big steps, big drastic steps. You can't waste not even a drop. We have to do what we can. Now is the time to do that. We have only got one last chance and one last window of opportunity. Hold on. Can we, can we please continue? Can we please continue? The leader is here to speak to the citizens of Cape Town about what the city is going to do about water. We will not tolerate disruptions, so can we please continue? Let me say this. Hello, everybody. And I respect all citizens and let me say this to everybody. It must take everybody. And I think we have only got this particular opportunity. Because I think as we all sit here today, we're not here to play politics. I don't know about you. We are here to make sure that we defeat day zero and do every effort that we can to fight this particular battle. And therefore, it will mean for every single one of us that we take away all frustration we take away everything. Our own families must use less water now in this time. We have to make sure that if you own a house that's got more bathrooms, more whatever, in every bathroom there needs to be buckets. You need to reuse your water to flush the toilet. Fellow South Africans, fellow citizens of Cape Town, I think we can, I think we have an opportunity to defeat day zero. And let me, as I bring this, I want to say to all the families that have done everything that they can to reduce demand, let me on behalf of our governments and the party and the citizens, I want to say to you, thank you very much for all your efforts.
the great difficulty is that in fact, that only speaks to less than 50% of our citizens. There's another 50% of citizens who have simply continued to use their consumption much higher than what they should be. And we will unapologetically go after these citizens. You see, indeed, every week, between 2,000 to 2,500 water demand devices are being installed in households across the city who exceed their allowance. This program will now be accelerated. The restrictions that will be in place from 1 February mean that the city will only be able to use 450 megaliters of water per day. Let me say this. This means that every resident of Cape Town can only use a maximum of 50 liters per day. No matter where you are, whether you are at work, whether you are at home, whether you are in any environment, it's 50 liters cumulative for the day. It's not 50 liters at home, then 50 at work, and 50 somewhere else. It's 50 per day for everybody, regardless of where you are. This will ensure that our efforts bring the demand to less. But along with that, the city will also be introducing mechanism to throttle water supply through pressure reduction. Fellow South Africans, this in fact may mean that certain parts of the city may be without water for a period of time never exceeding 12 hours. I would ask that this is something we have to adapt to as part of defeating day zero. I must emphasize that if we all stick to a maximum usage of 50 liters per day, we can push day zero out. Every day that we exceed that will bring day zero even much closer. I want to ask you, the question for every child, for every parent, for every business owner, is what am I doing today to reduce demand? I want everybody to join us in a process and in all the hard works of defeating day zero. It's not just something I'm asking you to do, I'm asking our own family to do it. In fact, from our own home, we will now try and reduce our usage to 40 liters per day. It's gonna be hard, but we recognize that it's no longer about convenience or anything like that. It's about ensuring that we defeat day zero. It's about making sure that on the day schools can remain open, hospitals will remain open. And let me say this to you, in the event that day zero was to happen, let me say, this is what it in fact means. The city, the province will ensure that in fact business communities, informal settlements, hospitals, we will ensure that that supply is met. But along with that, let me highlight that every plan has been put in place for the management of the day. Let me highlight the fact that as much as citizens are doing everything, our water supply is also shared between citizens and agriculture. And agriculture draws more or less the same amount of water from the, city, from the supply system as the city does during summer months. And it must be noted that agriculture has already drawn down on its own supply for the year. We thus need national department to accelerate its effort to manage and restrict this demand if we are to defeat day zero. I'll equally so with members of parliament will take this fight to parliament with the Department of Water and Sanitation and its minister, Nomvula Mokonyane, to fight to ensure that they fulfill their mandate. As I started early on, if day zero is to happen, and we're doing everything that we can to fight it, this government has been working hard in preparation to ensure that residents have all the information that they need and will have access to 25 liters of safe, clean water 
every day. The provincial government will work closely with the city to ensure that residents are able to access a daily amount of water. 25 liters of water per resident of the city if day zero is to happen. There will be identified public distribution points across the city who will receive their daily allocation. There will be a managed and in as far as possible in an orderly manner that we best know what to do. And I want to say this, I recognize that this day does posit a fear and an unease and a concern for many citizens. And we will ensure that all the plans as to how we manage this day are communicated clearly, are communicated consistently, and people will know. I want to say that the province and the city are now working on bringing on additional distribution mechanisms so that we can release pressure on public distribution points. And so, for example, which I want to applaud Helen Ziller and the work that she's been doing in this regard in liaising with the private sector, we will then begin to find ways to be able to go and deliver water to homes, to shops, etc. And I want to welcome the fact that there's been great cooperation. from the private sector, and these discussions will be accelerated in the coming days. Let me say this. I want to assure every resident of Cape Town that we will do everything that we can to ensure that details are shared with you and what day zero plans are, and they will be communicated well in advance of this actually becoming a reality. As I've highlighted, it must be noted that schools, hospitals, essential services, and informal settlements will be still supplied with water as far as possible. The city will also seek to ensure that the CBD areas across the city are supplied with water so that economic activity can continue. But let me repeat this. We can avoid this and defeat day zero. If we do nothing, then we will hit day zero by the 12th of April, if not sooner. But if we stick to 50 liters per person per day, we can give ourselves a fighting chance. We can ensure that we can push out day zero and overcome this crisis. Going forward, this team and I will be holding weekly briefings on the progress that we've been making in local media and on our social platforms. Please also visit Defeat Day Zero website and our Facebook page for regular updates and pledge your commitment to Defeat Day Zero. Fellow citizens, and I want to thank you guys for being here. I want to thank everybody. But this is not, this is a unique time. I started off earlier on today saying human beings triumph, and human beings have triumphed over great adversity. This is a natural disaster. This is our greatest moment. And I want to ask every single one of you, wherever you are, as a citizen, as a resident, as a tourist, as a business owner, as a family person, let us do what we can, and it is possible that we can defeat day zero. And when I look at all of the people here, I thank the businesses who've already committed, and I wanna ask all of us, let us now in this hour stand together united to defeat day zero, and we can, and we will, and we shall. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, Musi. I think Musi Maimane has made it very clear. He's put the facts on the table. He's informed you where the city's plans are. Uh, he's also importantly laid out that day zero is at uh, on the 12th of April, and it's important for all of us to make sure that we do our bit in order to save water. Will we defeat day zero? Yes. Will we defeat day zero? Yes.
Thank you very much. Um, we will now take questions from the media. Um, I'll take three questions at a time. Please just let us know which media house you're from as well as your name. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Artie Narsi from ENCA. Um, just three questions uh, for the leader. Firstly, um, what help has the Department of Water and Sanitation offered um, the Western Cape with regards to alleviating this crisis? Um, Namvula Bukanyani has said that um, there were plans to be ready for desalination last Friday, um, but those were stopped. And she also said that national funds were provided, but instead um, the the leadership has opted for Tony Leon's awareness campaign. If you can please respond to that. And um, secondly, if any help was turned down, why was it turned down? And um, Mr. Musi Maimane, in what capacity are you stepping in? Obviously, being the leader of the DA um, nationally, um, in what capacity and what role will you be playing? Thank you. Let me. Uh... Uh, uh... Uh, Vanessa Pune from the SABC. Um, you've mentioned, Mr. Maimani, that um, the various uh, or information will be forthcoming in the next few days. Um, I do think that at the moment we are currently standing at less than 80 days before day zero um, with millions of people in the city of Cape Town. Um, if we leave uh, the communication of, for example, the water shedding, if one can call it that, um, Surely residents need to be informed of this um, uh, and not just a day or two before the time. So um, can you uh, supply us with a date when these, um, for example, uh, these um, issues will be communicated to people so that they can plan accordingly? Thank you. Yes, and give you a voice to the Cape Radio Station. Um, obviously, small business is also part of, uh, a large part of the economy. Uh, what promise and commitment can you give to, to them to deliver water to them when day zero comes? Okay. Sorry. Uh, on a, let me just... I will request because I've asked Xanthia to be able to manage from the city's point of view, and so she will give some details about what assistance national government must bring on board. The fundamentals are, as I've highlighted in the beginning, that the provision of bulk water supply is a competence of national government. In fact, they themselves have communicated this issue. <laughs> the great difficulty is that, respectively, the budget of national government, if you look at the audit opinion in the last financial year, has been depleted. This is according to the audit report by the national department, but I'll get Xanthia uh, to be able to elaborate further on that. The city has taken multiple plans. As I highlighted today, desalination, as attractive as it might seem, a, is not the competence of local government or the province. B, it is not financially available. As I said to you, some desalination plants can cost up to 12 billion rands, and therefore, naturally, it would be impossible for the city to be able to do so. Demand reduction has been what the city has been effecting in place over the last number of years. Ian Nielsen will give further details about normal consumption in the city of Cape Town if you look, historically, it used to be over 1.2 billion liters of water. The city has successfully been managing the process to bring demand down to levels of 600 million liters of water. And now I'm asking that we get further to 450 million liters. So it's not any plan by any company. It's about the fact that now that we face this crisis of managing uh, day zero, we have to ensure that we further manage demand as well as bringing on, on, on board all the other augmentation pl uh, plans that the city has already embarked on. I think it's important to note that principally as leader of the DA, governments of the DA account to the, to the DA. We separate party and state so that all the respective members that are here have the effective mandate to be able to come through and be able to deliver against the mandate. Because when we set a manifesto, we come out and we say, our governments will go deliver on that. 
I am stepping in now in a role where I'm saying there have been a number of challenges and our political communication has not been right and therefore we've put together this team so that we can be effective at across all levels, whether it be in parliament, whether it be in province, whether it be in the city, in being able to respond to this issue. And I think it's a crucial intervention that I, as leader of the DA, have the principal role of ensuring that our governments deliver on the mandate that we communicate to citizens and voters. So it's within that capacity that I come on to. I think I'll allow Xanthia, Ian, and then Helen to communicate on how we effectively send information out to people. Thank you very much. Uh, just to respond to what assistance the National Department of Water and Sanitation has provided, the City of Cape Town has not received any financial support from the National Department of Water and Sanitation. What we did, what we did receive was 20 million rand from uh, the Department of Cooperative Governance and Affairs. This 20 million rand was allocated with conditions that we only utilize this money for underground water uh, resources such as aquifers. And obviously, if you look at the cost of drilling into the aquifers which the city has identified, it really is only a small portion of the overall cost of this type of augmentation scheme. And so the other assistance that we have received is, is in relation to um, some acceleration of water use licenses and um, additional advice from the Department of Water and Sanitation officials. But in terms of financial support, there has not been any. And perhaps if I could touch on the appointment of the external communications um, experts in the form of Resolve, just to provide clarity, Resolve is a subcontractor of HERO, and HERO is an, uh, the official service provider um, that provides advertising and social media support for the city. They have been appointed through a proper, open, competitive, and transparent tender process, and HERO is a subcontract of theirs. HERO's contract will obviously only extend to February 2018, and they are assisting the city to ensure that our communication is clear and as broad as possible to ensure that there is clarity amongst public in regard to the city's response to the drought. Good morning to everyone. Let me say that uh, I think I just want to first of all echo comments that Lucy has made, that we're sitting in a massive crisis at this moment, that we are not going to resolve matters by pointing fingers, whether it's amongst ourselves as citizens of the city or amongst governments, we have to now work together. This is the only way that we can get to the result which we want which is defeat day zero. We know that it can happen. We know that if we effort, put the effort in, every single one of us in the city, we can achieve this outcome. So currently, uh, water consumption in the city is around 600 million uh, liters a day. That's half of what it normally is this time of the year. And I want to thank every single citizen that's come to the, to the party to assist us in bringing consumption down. But we all have to work even more. Every single one of us has got to look for ways to bring that consumption down to less than half. We've got to get it down to one third of what uh, consumption was before. And I really assure you that in the city, we are looking at every single way that we can do that. So we're currently busy with the process of uh, reducing pressure across the city. There will, I'm afraid, be some uncomfortable issues over the next few weeks as we reduce that pressure. We will look into every aspect and ensure that we find a way to resolve any problems that might arise. But we are convinced that those uncomfortableness will be far, far less than what you would have to face if day zero were to arrive. And so therefore, these uh, uncomfortable issues of perhaps people being without water for some hours in a day uh, are really very little compared to standing in a queue with your buckets. So let me say uh, we do agree 
that we have to improve our communications. We have to ensure that there is better information to the public. Uh, I will be seeing that there is significant information to be placed on the city's website, very thorough in information for people to, uh, to look for themselves exactly what's going on. We also planning to put a little uh, program on there where you can work for yourself. You can look at if the city reduces consumption by so much, what will the result be? When will day zero arrive? You can model it yourself. So these are the, the things we want to put out so that the people of the city have a better control of the information and we will continue to look for better ways. So just as we, we drive these issues through, through our network, we will look for more ways. We will keep looking for more ways, just like every single one of us at home is going to have to look for more ways to cut down on our water consumption. But let me say the target of 450 megalitres a day includes water for business. We have to ensure that the economy of the city keeps going. We have been engaging business over many, many months now, speaking to them about how they need to improve their water uh, consumption. There, but there are many, many important businesses that are crucial to our city. For example, food production uses a lot of water. There are uh, much of uh, businesses that, that really just are essential for us, for our economy, and uh, tourism, the, uh, you know, the hospitality industry. We cannot allow these industries to crash. So everyone must be able to continue to have water, but they must also be very, very responsible in the way that they respond uh, to this crisis. And let me say we have achieved great deal of cooperation from a whole range of businesses across the city, and we will continue to engage them uh, and continue to find ways that business can carry on, that the jobs will be saved, but that we can still get through this crisis. So um, I think that you will see over the next few weeks considerably more information being provided to the citizens of the city of exactly, first of all, how things are progressing in terms of, uh, of all the efforts that we are taking, exactly what the situation is there, but also we will, as we uh, develop in greater detail the responses for day zero, we will be communicating that also uh, very significantly, and the province will also be doing so. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There's some crucial points that have been made by all the speakers. Firstly, it's absolutely right that finger pointing does not help. Secondly, it's absolutely right that we all have to put in an effort. And the only way we're going to prevent day zero now is if everybody cuts down to 50 liters or less of water per day. I always say we have to save water as if our lives depend on it, because they do. And that is what we have to do. Now, pointing fingers is quite different from pointing out who has what responsibility to do what in a crisis. And that is defined by the Constitution and the law. I can't come to you and shout at you for washing your car with a hose pipe when you don't own a car, because that would be shouting at the wrong person for the wrong thing. Our Constitution is very specific. And in the Constitution and the law, in this case, the law is the National Water Act, if you look at that, you will see very clear responsibilities that the national government and the national parliament have reinforced even in this crisis. The national government is responsible for bulk water, as the leader said. Cities are responsible for cleaning that water and delivering it to people, households, and businesses. And the province is responsible for monitoring that that is done so when we point out that it's not being done, it's not finger pointing, it's not bickering, it's our constitutional mandate to point that out. <clears throat> and then if the things that are supposed to be done are not done, then it's our job to coordinate disaster management. 
And that is exactly what we are doing. Now, the question from ENCA was, what has the national government, specifically Minister Nomvula Mokonyane, and she's got the nice ironic name of Nomvula, meaning mother of the rain. <laughs> I wish that was true. Nomvula Mokonyane, what has she done? Now, you heard a very important reply from Councillor Limburg, but I want to add this. In the middle of December, I got a letter out of the blue, after we'd had a cabinet lechotla at which I had addressed this issue very forcefully, I got a letter out of the blue saying, we at the National Department are going to put a desalinator at the waterfront, and it is going to be put in by this and this contractor, and it is going to produce two megalitres of water a day. And for those of us preparing for this crisis, we just had to laugh because it shows you how fundamentally out of touch the National Department is, I'm afraid. And that is not pointing fingers or bickering. It is just a statement of fact. Because number one, we are already putting in a desalinator at the waterfront. And we've gone through all the processes to do that. And it will be producing two megalitres of water in itself. And two megalitres of water is two million litres, where you heard the deputy mayor say, the city is currently using just under 600 million litres of water a day. And the national minister can't prescribe a contractor. There are processes, even in a disaster, that you have to go through. So to come in December and announce that you're going to put a desalinator in the place where there is already going to be one, where we've been all the process, through all the processes to put it up, is no solution. Not even near a contribution to a solution, especially when it is your constitutional mandate to provide bulk water. I was the mayor in the early 2000s, or in the mid-2000s, and the National Department says they warned us then that we were going to run out of water. Well, if they warned us then, and it was their mandate to supply water, why didn't they do it? Yeah. And the second point is that our water experts also warned us that we were going to head into serious trouble. And then all of the water experts in the early 2000s in Cape Town and the Western Cape fought like anything to have the Berg River Dam built against massive opposition from the National Department, to the extent that we had to agree to pay it back over time till 2022 from water tariffs in order to get that dam. If we hadn't forced through the building of the Berg River Dam, we would have been out of water long ago, even though it was a national function to build it. And at that point, at that point, Desalination wasn't much on the cards. It was still a very difficult thing to get done. And aquifer extraction from a very complex aquifer like the Table Mountain Group aquifer wasn't on the cards. Building dams were. And the National Department decided we shouldn't be building any more dams because of environmental reasons. And we said if we don't, we'll run out of water, which is worse. But equally, we started this world-class leak-fixing system, which has made Cape Town one of the best cities in the world for leak detection and fixing, as you saw, and far, far better at 14% than the 37% average loss of water in other cities. And we also put water management devices on people's homes. Not in poor areas. My house was the very first house as mayor of Cape Town to get a water device management. And when we ran out of water, I said to my sons, well, wait till tomorrow when our next allocation comes, because we've used our allocation for today. And that was done in 2007. So the city of Cape Town has fought like anything for the dam without which we would have run out of water long ago, has built a world-class leak detection and fixing system, and indeed has put water meters against huge resistance from our opposition on thousands and thousands of homes. Now we're waiting for the national government to do its job. 
I've heard that Minister Mokonyane has just come back from the inauguration of President Wei in Liberia, and I'm glad she's back in the country. And I've also heard that this weekend she will be in Cape Town, but I've heard that through the grapevine. And I've also heard that she wants to oversee what our preparations for the disaster are. Now, someone must very carefully take Minister Mokonyani through the Constitution and the law and explain to her that it's not her responsibility to oversee preparations for a disaster. That is Minister Des Van Royen's responsibility through the National Disaster Management System. And we have been liaising with the National Disaster Management System. We had a huge meeting with Dr. Tao from the National Disaster Management System this week. And she's very welcome to come and look at all of our plans. But she's going to be even more welcome to tell us how she plans to provide bulk water, which is her responsibility. And I'm certainly not going to lose the opportunity to ask her that question again. All right, uh, we'll take one last round of questions. We'll take five questions this round. Jetty Limbanda. I have interviewed several water experts and there's one question that they have asked consistently in particular. The city has on several occasions told us that without a doubt groundwater is our cheaper option instead of desalination. Could that process and the figures be made available for peer review? The water experts I've consulted with um, have indicated that they will do that peer review free of charge to the city of Cape Town. Also, we currently have companies in Cape Town who export their desalination technology overseas. There's a company in particular who has offered um, desalination to the city of Cape Town at zero cost to the city. There is a plan. They basically are asking for an audience with the city um, and that they could make that available. Why is it not possible for them to get an audience with the city of Cape Town? Another question, the last question from me is, should, the, should we run out of water if the dam, if day zero arrives? The water that we will currently get from groundwater and from desalination combined is a very, very small fraction of what we're currently using. How will the city provide water for its four million citizens should it get to that? All right, uh, just to, a reminder to please give us your name as well as the media house you're from. It's Brigetti Limband, and I'm from Be Live Media. Thanks, Pums. Let's just take. <laughs> More questions, Beans? Oh, that's that side. Oh, that side. Hello. Hello. Yes, Noah Norquist for Public Radio International's Living on Earth. Now, as you described, this as being an unprecedented natural disaster. Uh, is this uh, a random episode? Or is this a reflection of the new normal in terms of climate change in the Cape? If so, uh, and we, when we want to talk about accountability, what about companies like ExxonMobil who have profited from creating the climate change? Can they be held accountable and to pay for things like desalination or other remedial actions? Hello, my name is Natasha Skarik and I'm a freelancer. Um, I'd just like you guys to um, discuss the stats a bit more because I hear numbers like 50%, 60% being thrown around. Today you spoke about 50% of people not ascribing to the um, water sanctions. Sometimes I've heard higher figures. Um, I'd like to know how that's worked out, especially since it's, as far as I understand it's worked on a four person per household average which is obviously not the case for everyone. And higher households are registering, but lower households aren't. So how are households with one or two people being held accountable to keeping to the water restrictions? Because obviously they have a much higher cap. Thank you. Uh, Jason from the Cape August. Uh, just a question to Musi. Um, over here, Musi. Uh, most of what you've said uh, during this uh, 
Uh, Amir, during uh, this briefing, as been has been already said by the city of Cape Town uh, through the mayor and uh, by the provincial government through the premier, what is actually new about this plan? Um, all of this, what what you've said here, we've heard before. Over to you, Musi. Sorry, I thank you. Let me just, uh, I'll pick up on one or two, and I think it's important to note to the last honorable member's plan is that there's been a lot of misinformation, there's been some information that has not been accurate. My job today is to call upon citizens to reduce demand and to ensure that they, everybody is conscious of the new plans to throttle, which is to decrease uh, supply of water into the city but also to say that it is possible for us to defeat day zero. Because citizens have gone out in the city of Cape Town to say that it cannot be possible, so we must just live with its outcomes. Actually, I'm here certain that it is possible if we all reduce demands. It also is to clarify the percentage of which citizens are contributing positively towards reducing demands and which ones are not. I also wanted to introduce this team that we've put together as part of the mandate that comes from us to say, here's the team that is going to work against it. The other crucial issue is the fact that the misconceptions around what day zero is and what it means requires for us to clarify. So I am here requesting that in conjunction with governments, the people of Cape Town and all their respective aspects of government that we must work together against this plan that we've put forward today to ensure that we can avert day zero. That's the principal focus of us today. Yes. I will wrap this up. I think it's important to respond to some of the questions about how we measure percentages. And at this point, and then we'll talk the question about climate in a moment. Yeah. First of all, the, the question around uh, the data on groundwater. Uh, well, we are currently drilling in many cases, and uh, that will give us real data. So, you know, groundwater estimates were made in terms of surface evaluations. Uh, we had we had flyovers uh, in, with particular technical instrumentation uh, to try and detect how much water there was. So those gave us an indication of what was there. And now with the drilling, we will find out. And some of the boreholes that, that are already been done are providing good results. So uh, we are quite uh, satisfied we are going to get significant amounts of water from groundwater. But again, it will only be, the truth will be in, in the pudding. In the end of when we complete these boreholes, then we'll know for sure what, uh, what we are able to achieve. And I'm quite happy that that data is made public and anyone can carry out any uh, a peer review on that, if they so wish. Uh, but the, you know, let's let's wait until the drilling is finished, and then we will have some real data to work with. So the issue about someone making the claim that desalination would be provided at zero cost. Well, I don't believe anyone is providing at zero cost. What people are saying, well, they will fund it. We are still going to have to pay for the water, so it's not zero cost. The question is simply, is that the most cost-effective way for us to do it? And is there another company that, when we go out to a competitive bid, that could actually do it cheaper? So let's, let's be clear that, yes, many people come forward and say they can do this and they can do that, but uh, our approach in the end is we will put these things to competitive processes so that we get the most cost-effective way uh, of doing uh, this of getting the results we want to. Now the question around day zero, uh, you'd be quite correct to say that both the, uh, well the projects we have of desalination and groundwater and water reuse will not be sufficient to meet the 450 uh, megalitres a day, uh, or even what we need uh, beyond day zero. But the, this is the whole reason why setting day zero is not when the dams are empty. It's set at a level before the dams are empty so that there is still enough water in those dams to get us through uh, 
this and through to the winter period before running out of the total supply. So we factored in what we believe we're going to be getting from uh, these uh, augmentation schemes into, into the equation, uh, but uh, we, we know that, uh, that without rain and without uh, you know, significant uh, additional things into the future, we would not survive. So we have to, at this point, get through this summer and that's what we've got to focus on, getting our consumption down, so that, again, there will still be enough water in those dams uh, when we get to day zero uh, for, uh, for the, the reduced consumption that we would have to put into place. The question as to whether it's a random episode or the new normal, well, uh, to be scientifically uh, precise on that, we would have to wait a few more years before and get some more data to really understand that. But I think because it is so severe, we do seriously suspect that this is a new normal, that there has been a change in the climate. Of course, uh, we strongly believe that, that there is climate change that's been brought into place by human action. Whether or not we can uh, hold companies accountable for this I would love that we could do that, uh, but that would require significant international cooperation. Uh, I think the whole uh, Paris uh, Treaty, for example, was a key step towards that, uh, but only a very first uh, preliminary step towards being able to hold such people accountable. Uh, so at this point in the time, uh, the city would not have uh, the mechanisms to do so. Uh, Natasha, your question about um, about the percentages, uh, I think is, is an important one because it's a question of proper definition. And yes, you have seen different numbers over time because things have changed. First of all, uh, first of all, people's, the number of people cooperating has changed. More and more people have come on board. But second, we, we have also over time changed the definition. So, you know, when in the early days where we were, had a moderate levels of consumption, we were talking about those who used more than 20,000 litres a day, uh, a household. Oh, 20, sorry, 20 kilolitres a month. Uh, we've brought that down to 10 and a half, and we're going to bring that down to six now. So, you know, one has to look at that definition as, as it shifts through, through the strengthening of the, um, uh, of, of the, of the restrictions. Uh, you're quite correct that uh, all we can do this is at a household level. We don't know how many people are in every household in the city. Uh, so uh, we have used four people as, as the measure. That's uh, uh, that there are a very large portion of households have less than four, four or people or less. We have, for example, in now in the new uh, tough tariffs that we put in place last Friday, also provided a mechanism for very large households. So if you have a household of eight or 10, you can approach the city and we will adjust, in terms of the formula we set up, um, we will adjust the tariff that you have to pay that's dependent on, on your large household size. So we, we are very sensitive uh, to these realities, uh, but in the end, it's only when people are after themselves then make the effort to come to us and explain to us the size of their household. Uh, but if you're four or less, which is most people in the city, uh, you know, we will not be adjusting uh, uh, anything at all. Thank you very much, Ian, for that information. Ladies and gentlemen, I think the, the clarion core, if you've heard me say anything today, is that in fact we have to reduce demand and everybody must do their bit to be able to achieve that. I've also, in part of the work that we're doing, ensuring that all our governments, wherever they are, restrictions must apply. Water is a luxury that all of us have to look after. So in answer to the question about the new normal, it's not about rainfall patterns, it's about a resource management that globally we're all facing. But I really do believe that for where the people of Cape Town are, the more we can declutter what we have to do, how people see what they need to do is the only way we're going to win. So I'm going to ask all the public reps who are here, 
all community members, we have to go out there, businesses, civil society, let us go out and do everything we can to defeat day zero. It's the only option that is on the table, and I want to thank you for your time. Thank you to members of the press who are here, and I look forward to seeing you when we do the next briefing. Thank you.